Mr. President, distinguished members of the High Table, Your Excellencies, ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor for me to be here today at the 34th session of the UN Human Rights Council, which I believe has the highest number of dignitaries ever in attendance. I stand here today at a time when the very basis and fundamentals of human rights are being questioned around the world. Many of the universal values that we subscribe to are being challenged in the name of populism with its prophets spinning webs from the threads of ignorance. The role of this organization in this context, I believe, is becoming more important than ever. Mr. President, I speak today just over a year or 15 months since Sri Lanka took the historic step of co-sponsoring Resolution 30 Stroke 1. And many in our country at the time criticized and some still continue to criticize us for this step. Some even see this as an act of treachery and betrayal of the nation. We have a simple message for them as we journey towards 2018, Sri Lanka's 70th year of independence as a nation. For 69 long years, we journeyed through pain, violence, loss of life, and precious human resources, ruining chances of socio-economic progress. This was clearly an experiment in nation building that failed which is certainly not worth pursuing any further. Therefore, we must have the courage to acknowledge that truth and that era must now end. The Sri Lanka that we seek to build here onwards should be one where justice reigns, where human rights are valued, where every individual's dignity is upheld. Mr. President, as we move forward in this journey, the forces of extremism and regression on both sides of the divide are creating roadblocks for narrow short-term political gain. While stubbornly refusing to acknowledge any of the far-reaching gains we have made in the last two years, they argue that we have either done too much or too little. The recommendation of the GSP Plus concession from Brussels and the Millennium Challenge Corporation Com Compact Assistance from the USA, which were announced recently, was in recognition of the progress Sri Lanka has made in the last two years, and we await their formal approval in the coming months. Mr. President, since I addressed this Council on the 29th of June last year, legislation to give effect to the International Convention for the protection of all persons from enforced disappearances has been approved by the Cabinet of Ministers and is expected to be tabled in Parliament shortly. The formulation of the policy and legal framework of the proposed Counterterrorism Act has progressed in keeping with accepted international standards. Sri Lanka's Parliament also has enacted legislation to establish a permanent office on missing persons. The act that has been certified by the Speaker of Parliament is now the law of the land and awaits the assignment of the subject for its operationalization. In fact, the budget for the year 2017 has allocated over a billion rupees to start this unique office. A national policy on durable solutions for conflict-affected displacement was also approved by the Cabinet of Ministers and the issuance of certificate of absence uh, was, has also been enabled since last year. The UN Secretary General and the Special Rapporteur on Minority Issues visited the country. The list of designated persons under Regulation 4.7 of the UN Regulation No. 1 of 2012 was further amended. Sri Lanka's periodic reports were considered by the Committee on Migrant Workers, 
the Committee on the Elimination of Racial Discrimination, the Committee Against Torture, and the Committee on the Elimination of Discrimination Against Women. Reports of the six subcommittees of the Steering Committee have been completed and hand handed over to the Constitutional Assembly of Sri Lanka and the National Human Rights Action Plan for the period 2017 to 2021 has also been approved by the Cabinet of Ministers and indeed the Right to Information Act was also brought into force uh, on the 3rd of February this year. In addition, 11,253 houses were handed over during 2016 to the internally dis displaced and 4,785 million has also been allocate, allocated for 5,000 houses for the internally displaced for this year. The rehabilitation of persons, properties and industries authority repair payments for beneficiaries in 2016 amounted to 605 million and 574 million has been allocated for this year. 5,515 acres of state land and 2,090 acres of private lands were released in 2016 and 1,383 acres of state land and 30.5 acres of private land have been released this year last month. And the first ever National Integration and Reconciliation Week was observed from the 8th to the 14th of this year. Mr. President, another important undertaking that was successfully concluded during this period is a public consultation carried out by the Consultation Task Force on the Reconciliation Mechanisms, the first of this nature carried out in the country. Over 7,000 written submissions were received. The report of the task force is presently being studied in the context of designing the relevant mechanisms for truth-seeking, reparations, justice, and other reconciliation processes. We also expect the draft leg legislation on the Truth-Seeking Commission to be presented to the Cabinet of Ministers within the next two months and our resolve to bring justice to the victims of human rights violations remains firm. While taking the allegations of continuing incidents of torture seriously, it is reiterated that the government maintains a zero tolerance policy towards torture, as also demonstrated by the President's participation against uh, torture in a public rally held last year. Although the National Human Rights Commission has recently indicated to us that there is a downward spiral of incidents, even one incident of torture we believe is one too many. The Human Rights Commission of Sri Lanka, the Police Commission, the Ministry of Law and Order and other relevant agencies are now working together to prevent and combat torture. Mr. President, the constitutionally drafting process is for us both central and essential, not only for democratization, but also for ens ensuring non-recurrence of conflict. As we approach, as I said earlier, the 70th year of our nation's independence, we seek for the first time in our country's modern history to engage in this process wholeheartedly as an exercise that would unite our people who have been divided for far too long. The parliamentary process and rep referendum which should follow are for us imperative. Mr. President, the journey we have undertaken arising from our commitments to our people and the mandates received at elections is challenging. This may be a journey strewn with both success as well as some setbacks in the face of roadblocks and other obstacles in the in the day-to-day -day world of real politic they may they, there may have been certain detours from time to time but the destination and our resolve to walk the distance will remain unchanged our resolve to see see the transitional justice process through has not diminished with the help of all our citizens in all walks of life our friends and partners in the international community and Sri Lankans overseas, 
with patience, understanding and constant and consistent effort and perseverance, we strongly believe that we can make the reconciliation process a success and establish a progressive and united society working in harmony to take our nation toward new heights of socio-economic development. We believe that we can make Sri Lanka a shining example of a country that is prosperous, united in its diversity, upholding human rights, justice and the rule of law. I thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you.